Dr. Chris Yeager here with ISO Baseball. You can reach us at isobaseball.com. All of my ISO Baseball concepts are built on the foundation of the kinetic link. The kinetic link is not a theory or a system or a method. It is a scientifically proven principle that explains how speed is developed in the human body. The kinetic link has been referred to as the summation of speed principle, um, also as proximal to distal sequencing, or sequentially activated body segments. All of these describe the kinetic link as passing momentum from large base segments out to the adjacent smaller segments. It has basically two parts, the conservation of momentum or whip effect and the elastic reflex or the rubber band effect. Like a bullwhip, the distal parts of the human body are composed of successively smaller and smaller masses. And similar to a rubber band, the body's muscles are put on stretch before they contract. Let's look at this whip effect in a little bit closer detail. The loud crack created by a bullwhip is the result of the tip of the whip traveling at a very high rate of speed, upwards of 750 miles an hour, faster than the speed of sound. The whip creates a sonic boom. You know that you must stop your arm in order to crack a whip. When the arm stops, its momentum is transferred to the much less massive whip. What the whip lacks in mass, it makes up for with speed. It's very important to understand this concept that when the arm decelerates, its energy and momentum is transferred to the whip. This energy is fed down the progressively smaller and smaller whip until it's all focused in the tip of the whip, which breaks the sound barrier. Like a bullwhip, the distal parts of the human body are composed of successively smaller and smaller masses. And so as the pelvis and then the torso begin to decelerate or slow down, their momentum and energy is transferred or funneled to the much smaller segments of the arms and then finally the hands and bat. And so we're trying to maximize this amazingly powerful whip effect within the human body. And in this instance, specifically for the baseball swing. This graph in the bottom right is the kinetic sequence of a professional baseball player. And all the classic elements of a high level kinetic link pattern are evident here. The first line here in red rep represents the pelvis. The second line here that cuts across here represents the torso or shoulder segment. This blue line here that peaks here, that is the arm segment. And here we see the hands and bat. The most important part of this graph is to take notice of how as the preceding segment begins to slow down or fall off, the following segment begins to accelerate. So if you take a quick look at the graph, it's, it's easy to see that the pelvis here is rotating faster than any of the other body parts. And again, all these speeds uh, or uh, measurements are rotational velocities. It's easy to see how the hips at this point are moving fastest. Okay. The hips continue to speed up, start to pull the upper half, the torso, and the arms with it. But the important part is here. As the hips begin to slow down here, they begin to fall off, you can see the torso and the arms, along with the hands and bat, they begin to speed up. They begin to accelerate. At this point, you have the arms here in blue and the hands and bat here in gold just riding the torso. Well, as the torso begins to fall off, you can see it falling off, cutting across here. We then see the arms pick up speed and peak here as the torso starts to lose speed. And lastly, as the arms begin to rapidly decelerate or slow down here, you see as they fall off, as this is dropping off, you can see the hands and bat head spiking right before contact. So as the shoulders and then as the arms begin to slow down, they pass their energy, they pass their momentum to the hands and bat. And then all of that energy and momentum is focused into the hands and bat and we get this spike 
in rotational speech just before contact. So again, just like the whip, as the torso and arms slow down, hands and bat speed up. So what does this mean to the hitter or the coach? It means we're not trying to spin through contact with a baseball. We're trying to focus or funnel energy to a concentrated point. Okay? And again, if you look at the evidence here, you can see how the hips, they've, they've fallen off to, to nearly zero as we're making contact with the ball, as have uh, the, the torso as well as the arms have, have slowed down rapidly. So you're really trying to fire the hands or, or release the hands at contact. You're not trying to spin the entire body through contact. In high level hitters, again, we see all of the energy focused in the hands. All of this energy has been passed from the hips, from the torso, from the arms, and given to the hands and bat, which spikes right before contact, okay? We're not trying to spread that energy across the whole body. Okay, we want it. We want it focused in hands and bat through contact. And uh, throughout our data, we see a direct correlation between the deceleration of the shoulder segment or the torso and the acceleration of the bat head or bat speed. So we we want the body to rotate, and you know, we want the torso to rotate to a certain point. But once the hands uh, begin to take over we want that rotation to slow down and so resisting shoulder or torso rotation can actually increase bat speed as a matter of fact it will increase bat speed in comparison to a technique that tries to you know rotate through the ball or, or really muscle through the ball here we really learn to give energy to the hands and bat